Hi everybody, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small, and today we're going to be looking at Star Wars X-Wing Wave 9. This time we're going to be unboxing the large ship offering for this wave, the Shadowcaster, another scum and villainy entry for Wave 9. So this ship looks pretty interesting. We're going to go ahead and open it up. I'll do that off camera since it's so big. Uh, but we'll uh, see what Wave 9 has to offer Scum and Villainy this time. Alright, so here we go. We busted open the box and we have the contents. Uh, we'll be looking at this ship uh, in a little bit more detail at the end of the unboxing. We'll put him to the side. And here's all the cardboard and tokens and stuff that we get. So, uh, standard large base. The little mini rules for the ship. So it uh, has a component list, new rules, some other new rules I see there, mobile firing arcs. Um, so it looks like instead of a turret, you point your gun in a particular direction. Uh, and as an action, you can select one of your four quadrants to assign the mobile firing arc to. So it looks like maybe they are uh, trying to limit the turrets because it certainly looks like a turret on the top of the ship and then it has a custom mission mission 16 grab and smash i don't know if you guys have i've played a couple of these uh missions with amgas jake and they've always been pretty fun it's nice to play something that's not your standard always 100 point battle uh, so this one looks like it might be might be interesting and then on the back here we get a look at the dial so not too bad. I only see one red, and it's a five, uh, five flip. Lots of uh, everything at uh, speed three is green. So that, that looks pretty uh, fantastic, actually. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and look at the cardboard next. All right, first up we have the cardboard. Obviously the uh, the ship placards take up a sheet. We have the dial. There's a look at that maneuver dial. Again, at first glance, this doesn't look um, bad at all. Not bad at all. And then uh, looks like another uh, debris token. There's that mobile firing arc. I think these are for the uh, custom mission. All right, so that's our cardboard. And next up, we'll look at the uh, rule cards that are included. So it has uh, using cargo. This card explains the rules for the cargo token and serves as a reference for its effect. So it looks like you can drop cargo. So maybe that's what this is. And sure enough, it looks like that's where um, the guide rails fit in. So we can jettison cargo maybe to so in this um, wave, it looks like we have ships that can destroy uh, obstacles and ships that can create obstacles. So that's really an uh, interesting play mechanic that they are adding. So anyway, using cargo, that's the first reference card. Second one is debris cloud token. So that's, that's uh, again, this, this bad boy here. Uh, basically, when a ship executes a maneuver, in which either the maneuver template or the ship's base physically overlap a debris cloud token, the following, uh, follow these steps. Execute the maneuver as normal, but assign a stress token to that ship after the check pilot stress step. And the pilot rolls one attack die on a crit result. The ship suffers one critical. A ship that is overlapping a debris cloud during the combat phase may perform attacks. So you can still shoot but you are stressed and you might suffer a critical hit. So, interesting, cool. You can still shoot, so it's a little bit different than uh, asteroids and whatnot. All right, uh, next up, we're gonna take a look at the upgrade cards. All right, unlike the Protector at Starfighter, um, we got a lot of upgrade cards here. So, uh, first one is Veteran Instincts, uh, nothing new there. We're all familiar with Veteran Instincts. Uh, elite pilot talent, increase your pilot skill by two for one point. IG-88D, uh, scum only, 
You have the pilot ability of each friendly ship with the IG-200 upgrade card in addition to your own pilot ability. Interesting. So this goes uh, hand in hand with the U-boats. That's, uh, that's interesting. Okay. Ketsu Anyo, scum only crew. For one point at the start of the end phase, you may choose one enemy ship inside your firing arc at range one or two. That ship does not remove its tractor beam tokens. Okay. Lats Razi. When defending, you may remove one stress token from the attacker and add one evade result to your roll. So you can uh, convert your stress and uh, turn it into an evade. Black Market Slicer Tools Action. So this is an action and it's a scum only upgrade slot. Uh, choose a stressed enemy ship at range one or two and roll one attack die on a hit or a crit result remove one stress token and deal one face down damage card interesting now you get two of those and we have rigged cargo chute large ship only uh, again a, a scum only upgrade discard this card to drop one cargo token so that goes in with that stuff we've we've already seen Interesting, it's a scum only, but it's showing you a YT uh, 1300 there. Countermeasures, large ship only. At the start of the combat phase, you may discard this card to increase your agility value by one until the end of the round. Then you may remove one enemy target lock from your ship for three points. Interesting. Gyroscopic targeting. This is a Lancer craft pursuit, pursuit craft only. All right, so this one, at the end of the combat phase, if you've executed a three, four, or five speed maneuver this round, you may rotate your mobile firing arc. So a little uh, help with your, your firing arc. Tactical Jammer, your ship cannot, uh, your ship can obstruct enemy attacks. A uh, card that already exists, you get two of those. And then you get the Shadow Caster uh, title card for three points. Uh, after you perform an attack that hits, if the defender is inside your mobile firing arc and at range one or two, you may assign the defender one tractor beam token. Okay, for three points, so that's, that's pretty cool. All right, so first up we have a pilot skill two, Shadow Port Hunter, uh, and we get our first look at the stats. So we've got three attack, two defense, seven hull, three shields. Um, the action bar has focus, target lock, evade, and uh, that's the, the mobile firing arc. Change your mobile firing arc. And then we have one crew slot and two um, illicit upgrades, the scum and villainy faction, for 33 points. All right, so you could run uh, three of these pretty much naked for 99 points. So that's your pilot skill two. Then we have pilot skill five, Sabine Wren. So that's the uh, Clone Wars Mandalorian good guy. Apparently she's also moonlighting as a bad guy in the scum and villainy faction. Pilot skill five, uh, when defending against an enemy ship inside your mobile firing arc at range one or two, you may add one uh, focus result to your roll. So not, not uh, too bad. So that's a defensive um, buff for her. Then uh, pilot skill six, we have Asajj Ventress. Oh, so she's the bad guy from the Clone Wars cartoon. She has red lightsaber. Uh, at the start of the combat phase, you may choose a ship at range one or two. If it is inside your mobile firing arc, assign one stress token to it. So this is your stress, uh, stress bot equivalent. 37 points, and she is the first pilot here um, that lets you take a elite pilot talent or skill. Then last, pilot skill seven, looks like that's as high as it goes. We have Ketsu on Ono, Onyo. 
And he said, um, I'm assuming it's a he, maybe it's a she. Uh, Ketsu gets at the start of the combat phase, you may choose a ship at range one. If it is inside your primary and mobile firing arcs, assign one tractor beam token to it. So you can tractor beam someone at the start of the combat phase. And again, it has an elite pilot talent, 38 points you're paying for Ketsu. Uh, so that, that's pretty interesting. So what does this thing do that um, the other large ships for the Scum and Villainy faction can't do? Um, it looks like it might be a, a tad bit more maneuverable. Uh, it has a pretty sweet maneuver dial, um, but it remains to be seen. So let's take a look at the model itself. All right, so here we go. Um, it's a big ship, but it's you know it's not bigger than the Ghost. I think the Ghost is still the, the biggest of these these ships. Um, probably the Millennium Falcon even has more mass to it. So I'm kind of torn on this ship, whether I like it or not. Sometimes I really like it. Sometimes I I don't. Um, and the reason why is it's very Star Trek-y. You know, it kind of looks like a Romulan Warbird or the uh, USS Defiant. Um, but the cockpit looks cool. That's very Star Wars-y. The engines look like giant Y-Wing engines. I wonder in the fluff if this is created by the same company that makes the Y-Wing. Uh, the detail itself is, is pretty awesome. Now I think, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, that this ship was introduced in the uh, Star Wars Rebels cartoon. It may have shown up someplace else, but I think that's where it, it comes from. What's interesting is this appears to be the turret up here at the top. and um, But it's not a turret. It has that mobile firing arc. So it can spin 360, but it's not as maneuverable as what you see on uh, Millennium Falcon or most of those those turreted ships. Very cool. Again, looks like we might have to add some color there for the uh, the engines. But very nice model. So this retails, I think, for um, forty dollars U.S. Uh, you probably find it cheaper again online, but. Um, very cool ship. So the uh, Wave 9 had two uh, Scum and Villainy ships. You have this ship, plus you have the Protectorate Starfighter. Um, Rebels and uh, Empire only got one ship each. So um, it remains to be seen if the Scum and Villainy are now truly as well-rounded as the other factions. I have a feeling they, they, they should be. Um, maybe this will help uh, supplant U-boats as a popular um, build, competitive build, but I don't know. So I look forward to getting it out on the play mat and see what, seeing what it can do. Hope you enjoyed this unboxing. Um, if you did, please give us a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think of this ship, what you think it means for X-Wing as a whole. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. So thanks for watching and keep on wargaming.